The school of wisdom is a school where you never graduate. You are only admitted. The day you graduate, you graduate into failure. Arrival mentality. The level of light, ladies and gentlemen, that you need to excel in life and destiny. I submit to you by the integrity of scripture. There are very few people who have accessed that level of light. I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few people who have excelled notably in their fields of endeavor. And sometimes you will be amazed at the level of intellectual investment they have made and that they keep making. Whether it's in sports, whether it's in music, whether it's in ministry, you know, and so on and so forth. Sometimes when I'm studying, I get these very sincere text messages from people. Oh, Apostle, thank you for transforming us and doing this. And then I just look at it and, and I smile. I'm grateful on one hand. And then I just look at my Bible face forward and I continue reading. Because I have taught you, nobody claps for you twice for doing the same thing. Once you receive the applause for a level of result, that is it. If you don't grow, you will not receive any applause again. Arrival mentality. Yesterday's excellence will always be tomorrow's mediocrity. Yesterday's excellence will always be tomorrow's mediocrity. Once upon a time, owning a typewriter was a breakthrough. If you own a typewriter, it was proof that you had made it. But today you can pack typewriters and give someone. And the person will insult you and return it back to you. How about Nokia 3310? If I package it and give it to you today, I say with love from me, you accept I tell you it's a prophetic message that you will start hearing God. Otherwise, you most likely may be angry. Apostle, you mean, did I offend you? Why will you give me this? But once upon a time, it was a people stole to get it. People lied to get it. Yesterday's excellence will always be tomorrow's mediocrity. Or today's excellence, in fact. So you need to be careful that you got an award yesterday does not mean you will get an award tomorrow. Our world is full of people who live in there yesterday. Their arrival mentality kept them there while the world was moving forward. And when you talk, they start giving you stories of yesteryears. I once was the most brilliant person. Are you now? I once was the most intelligent person. Are you now? Those days, I was the one who interpreted for T.L. Osborne. What happened to you now? Celebrating yesterday at the expense of the impact and the exploits of today is a disaster. Your yesterday should never be better than your today. If I give you stories only of yesterday, as though God is not working today, something is wrong. The Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it yesterday, where did you keep him that your result is no longer happening again? I used to pray for the sick yesterday. Thank God for what is happening now. There are still sick people today. I used to teach yesterday. Ah, Job said, oh, that I was in the days of my youth. When the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. Can I tell you? May you never lack testimonies that the only thing you have is yesterday's result. I'm saying it again. May you never lack testimonies that you cannot tell people what God is doing in and through your life today. The only thing you have to say are the things that happened yesterday. I was rich. I was anointed. I was blessed. I was serious. No. Arrival mentality. Champions never arrive. They are aware that there is always more. You see and know the character of a champion by their passion to know more. I am I'm passionate about knowing the things and the areas of my ignorance. And when I find an area that I don't know anything about, I don't spare. I don't pity myself because of fatigue. I must drive that ignorance as soon as possible. There is something we call in our world a local champion mentality. Have you heard that kind of thing? Where in a small group of mediocres, you are the highest, perhaps the wisest, 
perhaps the most enlightened and this cancer of local champion mentality has destroyed preachers destroyed business people destroyed great people arrival mentality oh turn to the book of this and the man is watching what i already know it i'm sure with this way he's going with this revelation he must talk about first call you just watch and see the person who is talking has never healed anybody nobody knows you no influence no power no grace you are failed in almost every area of your life and mostly those who fail are the ones who are the commentators of destiny they can comment they can comment It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Have you seen a group of billionaires or millionaires sitting together? And with all due respect, someone who just shows up in their midst and sits down there and they are asking somebody a question that this our man has no idea about. And he will not let the people who have results answer. While they are talking, they say, well, eh, I don't agree with that exactly. What are you saying? What have you had? <laughs> you, you see how people disgrace themselves in destiny? People are talking about the anointing. And someone who has no understanding of the dynamics of the anointing is editing and complaining and say, well, it's not exactly like that. <laughs> and then those who really have the anointing are saying, okay, we are listening. And you are just saying rubbish and confusing yourself and making a fool out of your destiny. Then when it is time to make it happen, usually they step back. May you never be ashamed. Say amen. May you never be ashamed. I rebuke from your life an arrival mentality. Listen, always have the heart of a learner. I'm teaching you how to last. Who would imagine that the word incarnate, the logos of God, at age 12 will humble himself and go to the temple to learn what? From people he created? And without him was not anything made that was made. But when he became a man by himself, he went to the temple. I'm sure he would sit down there and then the Pharisees would be teaching him. There was this one that appeared to Moses and you'll be saying, wow, tell me more about it. So when the light appeared, he said, I am that I am. And the I am himself is listening and nodding his head. What humility is greater than that? If God can sit down to learn as a man, anybody that refuses to sit down and learn, you have pegged your potential for growth. Hallelujah. Champions learn. They learn all the time. They learn with their hearts opened. They learn with their hearts opened. You know that the, a man is going to last in life and destiny because of their passion to learn. Hallelujah. One day, someone gave me a book. Not, not, I think maybe just, I don't know if it's a, I think it's some lady wrote one book and just put it as a gift among the gifts they gave me. And, and I opened it and looked at the book. And to be honest with you, it was something I didn't seem to pay attention to, but the topic caught my attention. And I just said, wow, this is interesting. Turned to the back, read about the person. And I just opened just one small chapter and read just one line. And I was so blessed, so blessed. By what that lady i just read that part alone and then i kept it but i was blessed i remember one time i think i was looking for a particular i was just researching on a particular topic true story and then i saw a, a video maybe like five ten minutes on youtube i don't even know the person and the entire i'm not sure that it was up to maybe 30 or 40 what do you call that thing whether likes or follows you know the people listening to him and then i listened to what the gentleman was saying and my god it was five minutes of profound wisdom 
Yet nobody was listening. I said, this gentleman now may have known about me and never know that I am part of those who have benefited from him. I'm sure he'll be praying and say, oh God, let me meet this man one day. Not knowing that the man you are praying to meet listened to your five minutes video and was blessed by it. Some of you will never admit it. That you are a big man and say, no, I learned from a little child. Ah, that is a, that is a, an, a sting to your ego. You say, no, I received it from heaven. What is there to say you just land? Does it take away your anointing? Where did you learn how to cook this nice meal? You know, I have my thing with God. Tell the truth. There is nothing to be embarrassed about, ladies and gentlemen. I went to someone's house and saw, you may say, I saw them cook rice in a way I've never known. I asked a polite question. They taught me, period. Glory be to God, honor to the saints. What is the lie about? An unnecessary expensive lie. Say amen. amen. Arrival mentality. You must fight it. You must fight it. It is the cancer of great men. It is easy to study when you have not become. It is easy to study when men do not know you. But when you get to a point where your results are clear and obvious, can you sit down and listen to someone you trained and learn from him? It is one of the biggest disaster of men of God. If I'm not preaching and I sit down, there are times I go to preach in meetings and perhaps there might be a number of preachers, some preaching before me and after me. If I have the time, it doesn't matter whether I train the person, whether we are colleagues, whether it's a father, it doesn't matter. Once the word of God is coming or any platform to dispense wisdom, I listen to it carefully. If there's nothing I can learn, glory be to God. At least I did not waste my time. Are we learning? An arrival mentality. When you find what you do not know, humble yourself and learn. Humble yourself and learn. Humble yourself and learn. Reject an arrival mentality so that the word Ichabod would never be used over your life and your destiny. No. And I have taught you that everywhere you see greatness, respect it. When you see greatness, especially when you have access to it, respect it. If I have the honor of meeting any of our fathers of faith, the short time for discussion, that is not the time to start making any contributions. No. It doesn't mean I'm a dummy. There are things I know. But then I keep quiet because there are many things I do not know. And you use the opportunity and ask questions. Many of you would have been wiser if you did not waste your time. Have you seen people who come for counseling? And for 15 minutes they are teaching you. They sit down and say, well, I want to tell you, there's a way God works with me. So here's how it works. Eh? Every time, January, February, he speaks to me. So God told me, this, and so you are, why are you here? You are wasting my time. You are wasting the time of other people. If you are not here to listen and learn. And meanwhile, while they are saying all that thing, you have x-rayed them by the spirit. You have found them wanting on many grounds. And yet they will not listen. Then at the end, they say, well, I just felt it in my spirit. It always comes once in a while to agree with me. Agree with you, leave this place. You are not ready to receive. Not ready to receive. You are in trouble. You are owing. You are in debt. You are confused. You are oppressed and you are saying agree with you. What is there to agree about? Koinonia, are you learning? Arrival mentality. Always give yourself to continuous learning. First Timothy chapter 4, 15 and 16. First Timothy 4, 15 and 16. Meditate upon these things, the Bible says. Give yourself wholly, not half-heartedly, wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear unto all. Verse 16. Take heed unto yourself and to doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you shall save both yourself and them that hear you. May I never get to a point as a man of God where I feel I've arrived. I've known all the mysteries. I've known everything it takes. No. 
the victor's path the champion's path is the path of continuous learning don't just learn from fathers don't just learn from contemporaries also learn when it has to do with knowledge nobody has monopoly of it did you hear what i'm saying nobody has monopoly of knowledge there are things only fathers can teach there are things it is those under you one day you will be listening to a, a program something from someone perhaps someone you raise and you will hear the person communicate a dimension of truth in an interesting way and that becomes what ushers you to study hallelujah praise the name of the lord number three why is greatness short-lived why is there no longevity of impact in the life of many are you ready for number three distractions and compromises distractions and compromises galatians 5 7 to 9 distractions ye did run well galatians 5 7 who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth ye did run well it's a question He's saying you started well. What happened now that has hindered you from remaining? Verse 8. It says this persuasion cometh not from him who calls you. That means you have something has happened to you. This is not how you started. You have exposed yourself to another influence. The last verse. A little living living at the whole lump do you know what he's saying the character of satan is that all he needs is to introduce something small the living what do they call living in our days today yeast thank you you don't put the yeast the same size as the flour but you just put it as little as it is and watch the wonder it will cause the entire dough to rise that's what he's saying there a little living Living at the whole lump. Distractions. Philippians chapter 3, please. 13 to 15. Brethren, Paul is speaking. I count myself. I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. Hallelujah. Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. 14. I press. Someone say, I press. Let your destiny hear you. Say, I press. I press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 15. Let us therefore, he says, as many as are matured, be thus minded. You must have a mentality that you must press. No distraction. There are two dimensions to distractions. Number one. Getting into areas beyond the scope of your grace is why great people go down. The first part of distraction is getting into areas beyond the scope of your grace. Ephesians 4 verse 7. A painful lesson in that area was learned in the life of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was not a marriage counselor. He did not even marry himself. Instead of him to keep quiet, he had served God faithfully. The greatest of all prophets, provided he was within the area of his grace. No power could touch him. But when he veered off and now started talking about matters beyond the scope of his grace, his head went for it. The Bible says, but unto every one of us, listen, is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. There are men of God, there are business people, there are great people today whose downfall started. Not necessarily because of anything they did wrong, but they veered off and began to communicate along areas where grace was not given. Are we together? Yeah. This is very important. Distraction. So God gives people mandates. I'm not just talking in ministry. God gives people assignments. And chances are excellent. You see, the deception of greatness is because once grace is on you, whatever you are doing becomes so easy. You will think every other area will be like that. It is the grace of God on you 
that makes what you are doing easy. And then chances are excellent that people will now veer off into other areas where grace was not supplied. And they want to command the same authority. That's what gets them into trouble. There are people who have no business doing detailed teachings on finances. They don't have the grace. They could share it generally or learn from those who really have it. There are people who understand very little, perhaps about the dynamics of prayer. One of the, the major trouble in the body of Christ today is because everybody believes he has authority to teach on everything. So people stand, I can teach excellently well in an area and you will be surprised at the rubbish I will teach in another area. The ability to discern your area of grace and stay there with all humility, it profits you and then it profits the body. Are we together? No matter how much I teach on relationship and family and whatever, I will never understand marriage and relationship like a woman like mommy um, Funke Adejimo and then my dear friend and brother Pastor Kingsley and his wife. It's a grace God gave them. By the time you now feel, I can do it, I can do all things. You see, that statement is within the will of God. Are, are, are we learning now? Most times, that calamity graduates from pride. It starts from pride and then we delve into areas and we claim to be authorities in areas and we come up with misleading information. When you function within the area of grace, the grace given to you insists that you remain accurate within that area. Hallelujah. <laughs> there are people who get up and make expensive risks in their lives that ruin their ministries. They just get up and produce posters, healing meetings. They go online and copy the poster that Benny Hinn used to advertise his, his meeting. Healing meeting. Expect this and that. And they stand and shout and vow if anybody leaves here sick, Except I'm not a man of God. And the sick people say, wow, this is wonderful. We're in a good place then. At the end of the grace, after praying, for, if you are healed, come out. Nobody comes out. You sing praise and worship. I mean, just check. Nobody, should they lie? They were not healed. If you are learning, that's all right. If you are starting. But where you claim to be an authority in healing and power. No, sir. No, sir. It's not there. Period. Are we together? Hmm. Many people claim things they don't have grace to defend. Distractions. Can I tell you? Be comfortable where God has kept you and serve with excellence. Never be intimidated. You are only a king within your kingdom. Don't enter another person's kingdom and fight the throne. No. In your kingdom, there is a throne for you. There is a seat for you. There is a crown for you. There is a scepter for you. Remain there. And then respect other kingdoms that you do not have access to. Hallelujah. A gentleman with, with now, just, just jokingly, I believe a nice young gentleman, he sent me a text and said, Apostle, I want you to impart grace upon me. I, wanted, I was wondering, how does that happen? He said, I want to be able to raise a song and sing. And I said, my, you know, I, I, <laughs> I think I just re replied him a scripture. Let every man abide in his calling. I said, this guy is going to frustrate himself now. You will write a number of songs and not know which one to raise. Because it's not about having songs. This thing is of the spirit. There is a grace. There are people who try to sing and you know, you are saying, what, why now? You would have just done whatever you are doing. Hallelujah. And then there are many, many worshippers who now try to preach too. And they sing beautifully and then they say, okay, let me share something. And you're like, ah, why did you do that? You would have just stayed where God called you. Why did you now scatter everything again? This thing is about grace. Oh, if it is not on this, your head is not there. It's as simple as that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Distraction. So the first area of distraction is not, is getting into areas beyond the scope of your grace. You must be careful. 
God never sends a man to do everything. God never empowers a man to do everything. There is what men like Watchman Nee will call the limitation of the body. Your heart is responsible for pumping blood, but your heart is not your brain. You can have a healthy heart and have something called brain damage. You will see act like a fool, even though your heart is empty. Am I right on that? Your heart may have a problem and your brain is still working well. You will not even just act like a fool. You will die immediately. So the various parts of your body have their function. And the reason why the whole organism functions well is because the parts of the body limit themselves. If I need to pick something by mistake, I'm, you know, I'm, my hands are full, I may use my mouth to hold the phone, but the mouth is not designed to carry things. There are times you may need to veer off temporarily because of something you need to do. But the hand is at its best when it is reaching and holding, not walking. If you use the hand to walk, you will frustrate the hand. It was not built to walk. It was built to reach. It was built to hold. Are we together? The second area of distraction and compromises is not protecting your focus or your pursuit. So we're discussing the third reason why people's greatness is short-lived. Distraction and compromises. The A part is getting into areas beyond the current scope of your grace. And then number two, not protecting our focus and pursuits. Acts chapter 6 please from verse 1. If you do not create systems and structures to protect your focus, eventually you will find out that you are doing many things. There are people who are doing many things in ministry, in business, in career, in destiny, and they are honestly not making any progress. As we say, jack of all trades, master of... Precious and God bless you. I would like you to live a praying life this year, just like the scripture spoke about the life of Jabez. It said, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. But certain things in the life of Jabez, we are not corresponding to the honor that has been ascribed to his name and so Jabez cried out to the Lord O thou God that thou wouldest enlarge my coast it is time for you to cry out to the Lord it is time for you to engage your faith and also ensure that all God has promised written about your life becomes a reality see to it that your life must change do not keep quiet over that terminal disease do not keep quiet over that failed business over that crumbled ministry, over the report from darkness. Engage your faith in the place of prayer with what God is doing for your life, with what God has said for your life, and with the word of the Lord, and to see to it that all he has spoken about your life comes to pass. Do ensure that you subscribe to Outpouring Stream YouTube channel on this platform and share this message to your loved ones, family and friends. God bless you.